Welcome to Satu Carry 2.0 Nursing Channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss important questions for DSSSB and AIMS Nursing Officer Exam 2019. We will focus on AIMS Nursing Officer Exam job so that many of us will get a job successfully placing AIMS. That is your dream job. Before seeing this video, please subscribe to Satu Carry 2.0 Online Nursing Channel if you are not a subscriber. Also click the bell icon to get the latest notification about new videos. Let's see the first question of the day. The nurse recognizes that a client is experiencing insomnia. When the client reports, select all that apply. Option A, extend her time to fall asleep. Option B, falling asleep at inappropriate times. Option C, difficulty in staying asleep. Option D, feeling tired after a night's sleep. So which of the following statement indicates a client is experiencing insomnia? The right answer. Option A, extended time to fall asleep indicates a client is having sleeplessness. Question number two. Which is the correct procedure for collecting a sputum specimen for culture and sensitivity testing? Option A. Have the patient place the specimen in a container and enclose the container in a plastic bag. Option B. Have the patient expectorate the sputum while the nurse holds the container. Option C. Have the patient expectorate into a sterile container. And option D, offer the patient an antiseptic mouthwash just before he expectorate the sputum. So which of the following should be done by a nurse while collecting a sputum specimen for the sensitivity testing? The right answer is option C, have the patient expectorate into a sterile container. This is the advice guidelines for collecting sputum specimen. Question number three. An autoclave is used to sterilize hospital supplies because Option A. More articles can be sterilized at the same time. Option B. Steam causes less damage to the material. Option C. Pressurized steam penetrates the supplies better. Option D. A lower temperature can be obtained. So the reason for preferring autoclave to sterilize hospital supplies the right answer is option C. Pressurized steam penetrates the supplies much better than other method of sterilization. Question number four. After having an IV line in place for 72 hours, a patient complains of tenderness, burning, and swelling. Assessment of the IV site reveals that it is warm and erythematous. This usually indicates option A infection. B. Infiltration, C. Phlebitis, D. Bleeding. The right answer. The signs and symptoms such as tenderness, burning and swelling after 20, 72 hours after IV line is placed in a client indicates phlebitis, signs and symptoms, inflammation of veins. Question number 5. Nursing intervention that can help the patient to relax and sleep restfully indicates Include all of the following except Option A, have the patient take a 30 to 60 minute nap in the room. Option B, turn on the television in the patient's room. Option C, provide quiet music and interest reading material. Option D, massage the patient's back with long strokes. So which of the following interventions which can help the patient to get relaxed and sleep restfully during night time? Option A is right here. You must not allow the patient to sleep during noon time. If you allow that, the patient cannot sleep during night time. Watching television and uh, listening music, reading book material and massage in, with long strokes, this will induce the sleep slowly. But if the patient sleeps during noon time, that will inhibit the patient to sleep 
rest uh, peacefully at the night time. Question number six. A female patient is being discharged after cataract surgery. After providing medication teaching, the nurse asks the patient to repeat the instructions. The nurse is performing which professional role? Option A, advocate. B, manager. C, educator. Option D, caregiver. So if a client is given information regarding medication, then the nurse is doing educator role here. Question number seven. A scrub nurse in the operating room has which responsibility? Option A, positioning the patient. Option B, assisting with gowning and gloving. Option C, handling surgical instruments to the surgeon. Option D, applying surgical drapes. The right answer here. The role of scrub nurse is handling surgical instruments. That is the role of scrub nurse. Question number eight. The physician orders heparin 7,500 units to be administered subcutaneously every six hours. The vial rates to the vial rates 10,000 units per milliliter. The nurse should anticipate giving how much heparin for each dose. Option A, 1 by 4 ml. Option B, 1 by 2 ml. Option C, 3 by 4 ml. Option D, 1 by, sorry, 1, uh, 1.25 ml. So, how you give the dosage of 7500 unit in 6 hours? The right answer is option C. The dosage to be given is 3 by 4 ml. The nurse solves the problem as follows. So 10,000 units upon 7,500 units is equal to 1 ml by x. So the equation is formed like that. Now the 10,000 x minus 7,000, uh, sorry, 10, sorry, 10,000 x is equal to 7,500. Now the x is equal to 7,000, sorry, 7.50. Uh, divided by like you have 10,000 which is equal to 3 by 4 ml. Question number 9. The nurse uses a stethoscope to auscultate a male patient's chest. Big statement about a stethoscope with a bell and diaphragm is true. Option A. The bell detects high pitch sounds best. Option B. The diaphragm detects high pitch sounds best. Option C, the bell detects thrills best. Option D, the diaphragm detects low pitch sounds best. So, what is the statement about a stethoscope is true related to bell and diaphragm here? The right answer is option B, the diaphragm detects high pitch sounds best. The bell is detecting the low pitch sounds best. So option B is right here. The thrills are detected best by means of palpation method. Question number 10. Which human element considered by the nurse in charge during assessment can affect drug administration? Option A. The patient's ability to recover. Option B. The patient's occupational hazards. Option C, the socioeconomic status of the patient. Uh, here, the option C is not the bell detects thrills best. The option C is the patient's socioeconomic status. Option D, the patient's cognitive abilities. Now, which of the statement can, which of the following assessment can affect the drug administration? The right answer is. The patient's cognitive abilities can affect the drug administration role by a nurse. When the patient could easily understood about the drug and its importance of administration, then it is easy for the nurse to give the drug and make the patient to take the drug in an easy way. The cognitive abilities are very, very important. Question number 11. 
Thanos is assessing a client hospitalized with the urinal ulcer. Which finding should be reported to the doctor immediately? Option A, BP 82 by 60 and pulse 120. Option B, pulse 68, respiration 24. Option C, BP is 110 and uh, 110 by 80 and pulse is 56. Option D, pulse is 82 and respiration is 16. In this, the sign to be worried much about uh, is blood pressure and pulse rate. The BP of 82 by 60 and pulse of 120 is considered to be abnormal, whereas this indicates a signs and symptoms associated with bleeding and shock, whereas all other are around a normal areas. Question number 12. Damage to the seventh cranial nerve results in option A facial pain, option B absence of ability to smell, option C absence of eye movement, option D tinnitus. So, damage to seventh cranial nerve, facial nerve results in facial pain, option A is right. Question number 13 A client with diabetes has an order for ultrasonography. Preparation for an ultrasound includes Option A. Increasing fluid intake Option B. Limiting ambulation Option C. Administering an enema Option D. Withholding food for 8 hours So in case of ultrasonography, the preparation lies in the advising the patient to increase the fluid intake. Option A is right. Question number 14 a client with sickle cell anemia is admitted to the labor and delivery unit. During the first phase of labor, the nurse should anticipate the client's need for Option A. Supplemental oxygen Option B. Fluid restriction Option C. Blood transfusion Option D. Delivery by cesarean section So when a client suffers from sickle cell anemia and uh, he is in the first phase of delivery the nurse should anticipate for option A, supplemental oxygen. When you increase the oxygen uh, flow to the patient with sickle cell anemia, further crisis will be prevented. Such patient can be delivered with the normal type of delivery only. The transfusion and fluid restriction does not have any significant role with sickle cell anemia. Oxygen administration is very, very important in this case. Question number 15. After the physician performs an amniotomy, the nurse's first action should be to assess the option A, degree, degree of cervical dilatation, option B, fetal heart tones, option C, client vital signs, option B, client's level of discomfort. So which is the priority nursing action a nurse should do after uh, after the amniotomy, the important thing is assessing the fetal heart tone is getting the first priority here. Question number 16. A 25 year old client with a goiter is admitted to the unit. What should the nurse expect the admitting assessment to reveal? Option A, a slow pulse. Option B, anorexia. Option C, bulging eyes. Option D, weight gain. So a client with goiter when admitted, the nurse must expect for bulging eyes that is called exophthalmos. Exophthalmos is the production of eyeballs often occurs with hypothyroidism. The client with hypothyroidism will often exhibit tachycardia, increase appetite and weight loss. Therefore, answer C is right here. Question number 17. The best size catheter for administration of blood transfusion to a 6 year old is Option A 18 gauze Option B 19 gauge Option C 22 gauge Option D 20 gauge So the size of the catheter for the administration of the transfusion 6 year old is Option D is right 20 gauge needle should be selected Question number 18 the doctor has prescribed Exilon Rivastigmine for the client with Alzheimer's disease. 
which side effect is most often associated with this drug? Option A, urinary incontinence. Option B, headaches. Option C, nausea. Option D, confusion. So while administering reverse treatment to the client with Alzheimer's disease, the most anticipated side effect associated with this drug is option C, nausea. Mostly this drug causes nausea and vomiting. Question number 19. The best method of evaluating the amount of peripheral edema is option A, weighing the client daily, option B, measuring the extremity, option C, measuring the intake and output, option D, checking for pitting. So in this case, how we measure the peripheral edema? The right answer is measuring the extremity, the size of the extremity daily has to be measured with each tape. That indicates the amount of peripheral edema is progressing or it is diminishing. Question number 20. Nurse is checking the client's central venous pressure. Nurse should place the zero monitor at the which level? Option A, phlebostatic axis. Option B, PMI. Option C, Earth's point. Option D, tail of spans. So when you are checking central venous pressure, the monitor should be placed at zero level. At which point? The right answer is, you must keep it in the phlebostatic axis. The phlebostatic axis is located at the fifth intercostal space, mid axillary line, and is the correct placement of the manometer. The PMI or point of maximal impulse is located at the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. So the right answer is phlebostatic axis. Question number 21. The client is admitted to the hospital with hypertensive crisis. Diazoxide hypostat is ordered. Drug administer uh, drug during administration the nurse should option A utilize an infuse pump, infusion pump. Option B check the blood glucose level. Option C place the client in trembling birth position. Option D cover the solution with foil. So when you administer a drug diazoxide in hypertensive crisis, the responsibility of the nurse lies in checking the blood glucose level. Hyperstat is given through IV push for hypertensive crisis, but it often causes hyperglycemia. The glucose level will drop rapidly and stop. Answer A is incorrect because the hyperstat is given by IV push. The client should be placed in dorsal recommend position, not in Trenlenburg position, as stated in answer C. Answer D is incorrect because the medication does not have to be covered with foil here. Now let's see question number 22. A client with hemophilia has a nosebleed. Which nursing action is most appropriate to control the bleeding? Option A, place the client in a sitting position. Option B, administer acetaminophen. Option C, pinch the soft layer of the nose. Option D, apply ice packs to the forehead. So when a client in, with hemophilia, the nursing action appropriate is option C, pinch the soft lower part of the nose. When you apply pressure, the bleeding will be stopped. Question number 23. The nurse is conducting a physical assessment on a client with anemia. Which of the following clinical manifestation would be most indicative of anemia? Option A, blood pressure 146 by 88. Option B, respirations 28 and shallow. Option C, weight gain of 10 pounds in 6 months. Option D, pink complex sand. So here, when you are assessing a client physically for anemia, the important thing you must note that the as an indicative of anemia is option 
B respirations are very shallow, 28 only. This is because of decrease uh, HB and decrease uh, uh, demand for oxygen. There is increased demand for demand for oxygen. Therefore, the client is often have shortness of breath as uh, indicated with the answer. Question number 24. A doctor has prescribed a diet high in vitamin B12 for a client with pernicious anemia. Which foods are a good source of vitamin B12? Option A, meat, eggs, dairy products. Option B, peanuts, butter, resins and molasses. Option C, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Option D, option D is about shrimp, legumes and bran cereals. So here the diet which is prescribed for pernicious anemia which is having good source of vitamin B12 will be option A meat egg dairy products are the right answer here now question number 25 the nurse is caring for a client with stage 3 Alzheimer's disease a characteristic of the stages option A memory loss B failing to recognize fail familiar object option C wandering at night option D failing to communicate in the third stage of Alzheimer's disease the client will have which symptom the right answer is option B falling failing to recognize familiar object that is called agnosia the client with third stage Alzheimer's disease will develop agnosia or failure to recognize familiar objects question number 26 the doctor has prescribed aspirin 325 milligram daily for a client with transient ischemic attacks. The nurse explains that aspirin was prescribed to option A to prevent headaches, option B to boost coagulation, option C prevent cerebral anoxia, option D decrease platelet aggregation. Very simple question. The need of aspirin is option A. Option D, aspirin is to decrease the platelet aggregation. Aspirin de decreases the platelet aggregation or clumping, thereby preventing the clots. Question number 27. The primary cause of anemia in a client with chronic renal failure is Option A, poor ion absorption. Option C is destruction of red blood cells. Option C is lack of intrinsic factor. Option D, insufficient erythropoietin. What is the primary cause of anemia in a client with chronic renal failure? The right answer is option D, insufficient erythropoietin. Insufficient erythropoietin production is the primary cause of anemia in the client with chronic renal failure. Question number 28. A client with emphysema is receiving intravenous aminophilin. Which aminophilin level is associated with signs of toxicity? Option A, 5 micrograms per ml. Option B, 10 micrograms per ml. Option C is 20 micrograms per ml. Option D is 25 micrograms per ml. The toxic level of aminophilin which can induce toxic signs and symptoms is option D, 25 micrograms per ml. The therapeutic range for aminophilin is between 10 to 20 micrograms per ml. Levels greater than 20 micrograms per ml can produce signs of toxicity. Now, question number 29. A client on a mechanical ventilator begins to fight the ventilator. Which medication will be ordered for the client? Option A, sublimase, that is fentanyl. Option B, Pavlo, that is pancrom, pancronium bromide. Option C, Versa, that is midazolam. Option D, Atarax, that is hydroxyzine. So when a client is fighting in the mechanical ventilator, the medication commonly ordered will be pancronium bromide. Pavlon is a neuromuscular blacking agent that paralyzes the skeletal muscles, making it impossible for the client to fight the ventilator. 
sublimases and analgesic used to control operative pain. Therefore, answer A is incorrect. Versed is a benzodiazepine used to produce conscious sedation. Therefore, answer C is also incorrect. Answer D is wrong because Atrax is used to treat postoperative nausea. So, option B is right. This question number 30. An adolescent client with cystic acne has a prescription for acute pain, that is iso, isotretinoin, which lab work is needed before beginning the medication. Option A, complete blood count. B, clean catch urine analysis. Option C, liver profile. Option D, thyroid function test. So in case of cystic acne, when the client is having acute pain, the lab report which should, should be taken is option C, liver profile. Acute pain is made from concentrated vitamin A. The fat soluble vitamin, fat soluble vitamins have the potential of being hepatotoxic. So a liver panel is needed before starting the acute pain. Question number 31. While palpating a client's abdomen, the nurse notes a pulsating abdominal mass. This may indicate which condition. Option A, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Option B, enlarged spleen. Option C, gastric detention. Distension option D is gastritis. So pulsating abdominal is related to the condition called abdominal aortic aneurysm. Question number 32. The nurse on the inpatient psychiatric ward is caring for a client with non-suicidal ideation. The 24-hour 20, observer calls the nurse to report that the client took off down the hall. The nurse is unable to immediately locate the client. Arrange the following actions by the nurse in the order that is most appropriate. All options must be used. Option A. Notify security that the client has eloped and provide a description of the client. Option B. Notify the nurse manager. Option D. Notify other staff on the unit. Option D. Ask the observer in what direction the client headed. Very simple. When a client is having suicidal ideation, as a, uh, you are observing the client for 24. So, as a nurse, you are, what, what you have to do, arrange the following actions in the order. So, choose the answers of intervention in the right order here. All the four you have to consider when you give the answer. So, the actions to be done is in this order. Option 4. Ask the observer in what direction the client header should be done first. Followed by that, you have to notify the security that the client has eloped, means escaped, and provide a description about the client. And followed by that, you want to notify the other stops on the unit about the client escaping from the war. And finally, you want to notify the event to the nursing manager here. So this is the right order. The intervention has to be done. Question number 33. What is the best treatment for ruptured aneurysm? Option A, antihypertensive medication administration. Option B, iotogram. Option C, beta adrenergic blocker administration. Option D, surgical intervention. So, best treatment for ruptured aneurysm is surgical intervention. It is an emergency management is needed in this case of ruptured aneurysm. Question number 34. The nurse is assessing a young adult client who begins to have a grand mal seizure for the first time. Which of the following actions should the nurse do first? Option A. Protects the client's airway. Option B. Restrain the client. Option C. Record the length of the seizure. Option D. Report the physician. The primary priority action when a client has seizure for the first time, the nurse should do protect the client airway. The priority is to protect the client's airway and prevent aspiration. You can turn her head to the side 
or turn the client on her side to prevent aspirations from the secretions of mom. Question number 35. A nurse is assessing a client diagnosed with acute diverticulitis. Which finding should make the nurse suspect that the client has an intestinal perforation? Option A is elevated white blood cells. Option B, temperature of 101 degree Fahrenheit. Option C is absent bubble sounds. Option D is abdominal pain. So when a client is diagnosed with acute diverticulitis, the finding the nurse should suspect which is causing intestinal perforation is option C is options of bowel sounds. Clients with intestinal perforation will develop paralytic ileus, increased temperature, WBC and abdominal pain are all the symptoms of acute diverticulitis. Question number 36, ECG based question. A nurse admits a client to a telemetry unit and obtain the following electrocardiogram. Strip of the client's heart rhythm. What should the nurse's interpretation of this rhythm strip? Option A, atrial flutter. Option B is atrial fibrillation. Option C is sinus bradycardia. Option D is sinus rhythm with premature atrial contractions. So this indicates which of the following this. The right answer first we will see it indicates sinus bradycardia. Let's see the rational for this. Sinus bradycardia is a regular rhythm with a ventricular rate less than 60 beats per minute and one discernible P wave prior to each QRS. Atrial flight Atrial flutter is either regular or an irregular rhythm with multiple discernible P waves prior to each QRS complex and no measurable PR interval. Whereas atrial fib fibrillation is an irregular rhythm with multiple non discernible fibrillatory P waves prior to each QRS and no measurable PR interval. Sinus rhythm with PSCS is an irregular rhythm with a ventricular rate between 60 and 100 beat, uh, beats per minute. One disc, uh, there is one discernible P wave prior to each QRS complex and a PR interval between 0.12 and 0 0.20 seconds. With the presence of premature atrial beats that occur early in the cardiac cycle, the PSCS also have one discernible P wave prior to each QRS complex and a PR interval between 0 0.08 and 0 0.20 second. Next question. Question number 36. A nursing home client is admitted to the hospital with a pressure ulcer involving full thickness loss, uh, full thickness loss extending to the bone. The nurse documents the pressure ulcer as being at which of the following stages? Option A, stage 1, option B, stage 2, option C, stage 3, option D is stage 4. So, a client who is having pressure ulcer involving the full thickness loss extending to the bone, the client is at the stage 4th of the pressure ulcer. Stage 1, here the skin is intact with non blanchable redness over a localized area. In stage 2, it involves a partial thickness loss of the epidermis. In stage 3, it involves a full thickness loss, but bone, tendon and muscles are not exposed. In stage 4, it involves a full thickness loss with exposed bone, tendon and muscles. Question number 37. A nurse is creating a teaching plan for a school child with urinary tract infection. Which factors should the nurse assess first? Option A, dietary intake. B, toileting habits. Option C, calcium intake. Option D, yes, activity level. Very simple. The nurse should assess for toileting habits. The nurse should assess the toileting habits before creating a teaching plan for the school age child with UTI. Based on her finding, the nurse should instruct the child in proper front to back wiping hand washing and toilet use. 
use every two hours it is unnecessary to ask about the child's dietary intake calcium intake or activity level at this time next question question number 38 a nurse is teaching the parents of a child with diabetes which agent should the nurse teach the parents to administer if the child suffers a severe hypoglycemic reaction option a iv dextrose option b subcutaneous insulin administration option c subcutaneous glucagon administration option d oral fast acting carbohydrate administration when uh, teaching the parents about the child with diabetes the age and the nurse should teach the parents to administer when the child suffers a severe hypoglycemia yes administration of subcutaneous glucagon is recommended the nurse should instruct the parents of a child with diabetes about a proper administration of subcutaneous glucagon if the child suffers a severe hypoglycemic episode administering insulin subcutaneously would further worsen the child's condition iv dextrose is reserved for healthcare professionals especially uh, trained in iv drug administration oral administration of fast acting carbohydrates is reserved for the conscious child who is in suffering from severe hypoglycemic reaction now let's see the question number 39 a nurse assesses a neonate's respiratory rate at 46 breaths per minute, 6 hours after birth. Respirations are shallow with the periods of apnea lasting up to 5 seconds. Which action should the nurse take next? Option A. Attach an apnea monitor. Option B. Continue routine monitoring. Option C. Follow the respiratory arrest protocol. Option D. Is call the pedi pediatrician immediately to report the finding so in such case the nurse should do what the nurse should continue routine monitoring the normal respiratory rate is 30 to 60 breaths per minute attaching the apnea monitor following respiratory arrest protocol and notifying the pediatrician of the finding are unnecessary because the listed findings are normal respiratory pattern in the new neonates now let's see the question number 40 a neonate weighing 1503 gram is born at 32 weeks of gestation during assessment 12 hours after birth the nurse notices these signs and symptoms hyperactivity persistent shrill cry frequent gowning sorry frequent yawning and sneezing and jitteriness these symptoms indicate option a sepsis b hepatitis option c drug dependence option d hypoglycemia so when the client is having 1503 gram 32 weeks of gestation and during assessment of two lovers the following signs and symptoms are noticed that indicates the client is the symptoms indicate drug dependence mother may have the drug addiction this classic symptoms of drug dependency usually appears within the first 24 hours after birth sepsis is indicated by temperature instability and tachycardia whereas hepatitis will manifest itself as jaundice hypothermia muscle twitching and diaphoresis and respiratory distress may be signs of hypoglycemia so the right answer here is the nurse would the suspect for this symptom as a drug dependence. So we have completed the 40 questions in this video and take the subscriber challenge question of this video. You have one question to answer. Please answer the subscriber challenge question in the main comment box with the rational. You get a chance to get the endless mouse way or show this. Let's see the first question of the subscriber question s yes, one subscriber question number one a client in the 28th week of gestation comes to the emergency department because she thinks she is in labor to confirm a diagnosis of preterm labor the nurse should expect the physical examination to reveal option a irregular uterine contraction with no cervical dilatation 
option b painful contraction with no cervical dilatation option c regular uterine contraction with cervical dilatation option d regular uterine contraction with no cervical dilatation so which is the right answer for this question when the client admitted comes to the uh, emergency department at 28 weeks of 28 weeks of gestation because she think that it is a preterm labor to confirm the diagnosis of preterm labor what you know should expect in the physical examination so write your comment in the comment box with rational so that you will be the lucky winner we have completed all the 40 questions which are very important and very useful for the upcoming aims nursing officer exams aims nursing officer exams are not going to be very simple it will be a very challenge for everyone so prepare well for the upcoming aims nursing officer exam to get your dream job in your hand thanks for watching this video hope you all enjoyed if you all like this video please like this video and give the comment about this video also i request all you to tell your friends to please subscribe to satu kenny 2.0 online nursing channel thank you take care bye bye